Hi everyone, welcome to CS 188 section 10, and today we'll be working on Naive Bayes and Perceptrons. So first, Naive Bayes. In this question, we will train a Naive Bayes classifier to predict class labels Y as a function of input features A and B. Y, A, and B are all binary variables with domains 0 and 1. We are given 10 training points from which we will estimate our distribution. So the first question that they ask is, what are the maximum likelihood estimates for the tables probability of y, probability of a given y, and probability of b given y? So the maximum likelihood estimates will be the counts divided by the total number of samples. So let's do this by example. So we say, what is the probability that y equals 0? Well, let's count how many times we see y is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we see it six times. And how many total examples are there? Well, there's 10. And how many examples are there of y equals 1? 1, 2, 3, 4. And how many total examples are there? 10. And always check that it sums to 1. Now, let's keep going. So given that y equals 0, how many times is a 0? So we have 1 only one time. And how many times does y equal 0? Well, we did that before. That's 6. So now this has to sum up to uh, a valid distribution, because given a fixed y, it should sum to 1. So then we know that this has to be 5. So I only have to do half the work. Now, given that y equals 1, how many times is a 0? So given that y equals 1, I have 1 time. So that's 1 time. And how many times is y equals 1? Well, we did that before. That was 4. And we can, again, make sure it sums to 1. So that's 3 over 4. Now, given that y equals 0, how many times is b 0? 1 time, 2 times. How many times is y 0? Well, that's 6. Then to make it sum to 1, we know that's 4. Now, given that y equals 1, how many times is b 0? We have 1. 1 time. So that's 1, and b, y is 1 4 times. And to make it sum to 1, this is also 3 over 4. Okay, now they say consider a new data point, A equals 1, B equals 1. What label would this classifier assign to this label? So we know that the probability that we would classify as 0, given A equals 1, comma B equals 1, we know that's proportional to the joint. And this equals probability of y equals 0, just doing the Bayes net uh, product of local conditionals. Probability a equals 1 given y equals 0, and probability of b equals 1 given y equals 0. So I can look up at my table, and I get 3 over 5, 5 over 6, and 2 over 3, and this equals 1 over 3rd, if you simplify it out. OK, so let's do this again for the probability that y equals 1. Given a equals 1, comma b equals 1. So again, this is proportional to the joint. And again, I can write it out as the product of the local conditionals. But now y equals 1. And now I can look up in my tables these values. 2 over 5, 3 over 4, and 3 over 4. So that equals 9 over 40. So now what I notice is that 1 third is greater than 9 over 40. So I'm going to predict label 0 because it's more likely. 
Okay, now for question three. Let's use Laplace smoothing to smooth out our distribution. Compute the new distribution for a probability of a given y given Laplace smoothing for k equals two. So, what I'm going to do is I take the distribution that I have up here and I'm gonna add these artificial samples. So originally I had, for given y equals zero, I had one example of a as one but now I'm adding two artificial examples. Now, for the other part of this table, given y equals zero, how many a equals one did I have? I had five. How many am I adding? I'm adding two. Now what's on the denominator, denominator on both? Well, we need to make sure this sums to one. So it's gonna be three plus seven equals 11. Three plus seven is 10. Oopsie. Math mistake. Okay, so we get 3 over 10 and 7 over 10. And now we'll do the same for this one. So given that y equals 1, how many times was a 0? One time. And I'm adding two artificial samples to it. Now given y equals 1, how many times was a 1? Three times. And I add artificial samples to it. Now what do I divide by? Whatever normalizes it to 1. So I have 3 and 3 plus 5, which is going to be 8. So we get 3 over 8 and 5 over 8. Alright, so now we'll move on to perceptrons. So in this problem, they say you want to predict if movies will be profitable based on their screenplays. You hire two critics, A and B, to read a script and you have you have, and they rate it on a scale of 1 to 5. The critics are not perfect. Here are five data points, including the critic score and the performance of the movie. So in the first question, they ask us, uh, you'd like to examine the linear separability of the data. Plot the data on the 2D plane below, label profitable movies with plus and non-profitable movies with minus, and determine if they are linearly separable. So first we have see, so this is, starts at 1. So we're going to apply pellet power, 1 comma 1, and that's a minus. And then we plot ghost is 3 comma 2, and that's a plus. Then we plot 4 comma 5, pack is back, is a no. It's a minus. And then 3 comma 4 is a yes. And then two comma three is a yes. Okay, so now they ask us, is the data linearly separable? So the data is not linearly separable. So how do I determine this? Well, what I do is I try to find if I can draw any line such that the date, all the pluses are on one side and all of the minuses are on the other. But as you can see, because the two minuses are on the opposite sides of each other and the pluses are like kind of in between them, there's no line I can draw that achieves that. So it's not linearly separable. And usually just trying to draw a line is the best way to determine this if we're in 2D. Okay, so moving on, they say, now you first decide to use the perceptron to classify your data. This problem, you'll use the multi-class formulation even though there are only two classes. Suppose you directly use the scores given above as features together with a bias feature, that is F0 equals one, F1 equals score given by A, and F2 equals score given by B. So you want to train the perceptron on the training data. The initial weights are given below. So the first thing they ask us is, which is the first training instance at which you update your weights? So what we do is, we're going to first work with pellet power. So this is for pellet power. And we form the feature vector. So f is 1, 1, 1. And now I want to determine the activation of each. Would I predict yes or no? So the activation of yes. equals the dot product 
between negative 1, 0, 0, dotted with 1, 1, 1, and that equals minus 1, and the activation of no equals 1, 0, 0, dotted with 1, 1, 1, equals 1. So my label y equals no. And what was the actual label? Well, if I look at my data, y star equals no. So I don't update this, the weights on this sample because there's no error. So now we continue. So now we do, we use the data point ghosts. And the feature f is one, three, two. And the activation of yes is the dot product between the weight vector Maybe one zero zero dotted with the feature vector one three two equals minus one and the activation of no equals one zero zero the weight dotted with the feature vector one three two equals one so then I would say that y equals no but then I look and I see that y star equals yes they don't equal each other, which means we're going to do an update. So the first training instance we do an update on is ghosts. Now they, in part ii, they say in the table above, write the updated weights after the first update. So we know that because we want to increase the likelihood of yes, so we do w yes plus the feature vector. That's going to be one negative one zero zero plus the feature vector one three two. So that'll give us zero three two. And we want to decrease the likelihood of no because that was incorrect. So equals W no minus F, which equals one zero zero minus one three two. So that gives us 0, negative 3, negative 2. Okay, so now in part B, they're going to ask us some more general questions. So more generally, irrespective of the training data, you want to know if your features are powerful enough to allow you to handle a range of scenarios. Some scenarios are given below. Circle those scenarios for which a perceptron using the features above can indeed perfectly classify the data. So. They say your reviewers are awesome. If the total score, uh, if the total score is more than eight, then the movie will definitely be a success. Otherwise, it will fail. So let's draw a graph. So if we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Anything above an eight will be a success. So at three comma five, all the way to this other three comma five. Basically anything I put up here above this will be a success and anything below will be a failure. Well, as you can see, because it's anything above this line, then it is linearly separable. So then we can, uh, find a weight vector to do this. So this will, since it's a circle, so this will work. Now they say your reviewers are art critics. Your movie will succeed if and only if each reviewer gives either a score of a two or a three. So again, we can plot this and it only succeeds if it's a two or a three. So it's gonna be this middle region. And anything else outside of it, Will be, will be a failure. So if we want to separate the pluses from the minuses, we'd have to draw a circle around the plus. That's the only way we can do it. And we only can do lines. Therefore, there's no way we can draw a line that separates the pluses from the minus. So we cannot use our current features to successfully separate those. Now, they say your reviewers have weird taste, weird but different tastes. Your movie will succeed if and only if both reviewers agree. So this means that you'll 
only succeed if you get a plus on the diagonal, which means they're equal. And this might make you think, oh, this is a line, then, you know, uh, the perceptron can classify linearly in the features, so this should work. But keep in mind that the negative examples are on both sides. And in perceptrons, you're finding a boundary. So even if I draw a line through here, everything, let's say, above it will be classified as plus, and that's not correct. So therefore, given our current features, we also cannot do this.